Researching the depths of the ocean is a complex and difficult thing to do while traversing the Mariana Trench. You're going to want to, of course, gather the information you can from the depths and bring it back up. That's the main idea of the game. Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. And today's game up on the tabletop is called The Mariana Trench by Bright Light Games. The game is designed by Thomas Layton and illustrated by Tristan Rossum. And in the game, you are playing a one to two player game of searching in the deepest depths of the ocean. You're going to take either the frog fish or the shrimp here, and you are going to attempt to get down to the depths. You'll be researching the bottom area, gathering your research, research materials and bringing them up to the top to the research vessel. And you're also going to be finding unique creatures down below in the deepest depths of the ocean. You might run across some unique lantern type fish or sharks or even some even uh, fake creatures like the Kraken and whatnot with the expansion Creatures from the Deep. And as you collect the creatures, you can either turn them into valuable upgrades or you can collect them as set bonuses that will give you more points at the end of the game. And you're also going to be obviously going down to the depths and bringing up that research material which gives you points. Can you gather more points than your opponent? Or will the creatures of the depths destroy your research vessel and reduce the possibility of you scoring points at the end of the game when your oxygen levels run out with the deck? Let's take a look down below. I'll show you what comes in the game, how to play, and then we'll talk about my review. And now we find ourselves in the depths of the ocean, the deepest depths, the Mariana Trench. This is the game and everything that is included along with the From the Deep expansion. To set the game up, you're simply going to shuffle the deck of cards that are going to have these bubbles on them and place them here. And also take the oxygen cards, one, two, and three, put one on the bottom, three on top, and place them on this stack here. And then place the rest of the cards on top of the stack, forming the deck. You're going to take four of those cards and place them in these four areas here. There's also cards that are going to have a back that looks like this that you're going to place in five different areas. The two different submarines, whether you're playing the single player variant of the game or two players, will go in each of these adjacent spaces next to the research ship. The trench floor will be at the bottom along with every research token and obviously with the expansion will come more research tokens which you'll just place down below. And then the research points character or player reference will be over here in the corner. You'll place these research state research stations over here but when you do place them you'll put them down in your column when you gather them if you do and then you're gonna have these sprockets here that explode that do damage to your ship you'll place them over here these are negative points at the end of the game so try and avoid getting them the final thing you'll do is you'll take your little shock tokens and you'll place them on your submarines to start the game these are going to remove cephalopods the most dangerous creatures of the depths preventing them from doing damage to your submarine you can shock them and prevent them from hurting you and then acquire them in the game, it's pretty simple. You're going to have the option to move. Well, you're going to have the ability to move. And then you're going to be able to either research by flipping one of these cards over or take a look at the trench floor, gathering one of these guys here. Another thing you can do is end your turn here, which will allow you to refresh this little shocker here so that you don't take damage when flipping over cephalopods. And the objective of the game is pretty simple. You'll be going down, gathering these guys here, flipping these cards over here, bringing them up here, and turning them in. Certain fish are going to count as two set bonuses that will score you points at the game and you're going to look into this little booklet here and we'll tell you how it works but basically the idea is you want the same of and you want different fish and you'll score them both ways and you're also going to get points for each of the research tokens that you gather on a player's turn they're going to move based on their movement which is generally two but it can be upgraded one and two they can of course move less and then they're going to have to flip over the card they'll flip over the card and see what it is it will tell you on the left hand side what the upgrade is and on the right hand side it'll tell you what type of fish it is whether it is a cephalopod or whether it is a deep sea fish or whatnot and then on the bottom of that will tell you if it's a large or a small fish to start the game off if you want you can actually go ahead and collect smaller fish you can actually collect one small fish so if i wanted to i could go ahead and take this as a fish and when i get back up here whenever i choose 
choose to do so, that is going to net me one fish into my tableau area. At the end of the game, I'll score points on it. The other option for most of these guys here is you can choose to use them as upgrades, and upgrades are going to put them on the opposite side. And in this case, it will let you either store a large fish or it will let you store two small fish. After you've chosen one of the two things, then you're going to take a card from the top of the deck, refresh it, and it's the next player's turn, or if you're playing the AI, it's the AI's turn. And the AI works pretty simply. It's always going to go down its max movement speed. It's going to go ahead and attempt to flip all these cards. It will go down here, and it will collect, and it will come up and return everything it can, and you're trying to stomp that computer out. So once again, he would go two spaces, and he could go ahead and flip this card over here, and then check to see what it is. It is a great white shark. It's going to give him, or her, the ability to move up or down one extra space so instead of two they can go three it's also a large fish and it's got that shark symbol on there so they could choose to either gather it as a fish or gather it as an upgrade in which case an upgrade is probably nice to let them go farther along placing this here in which case once again down below flipping it over <gasps> we've encountered a cephalopod now in general cephalopods are going to give you these little tokens here which give you negative points at the end of the game but if you have a shock token you can go ahead and discard that shock token and that will stun the fish allowing you to either capture it or use it as an upgrade and in this case because of the fact that you already have this upgrade you cannot use it again you can only gather one of each type of upgrade so you can go ahead and place that card as a fish and that's one large fish you can get for your collection and then you would keep going throughout the game. Now, sometimes you're going to actually run out of the ability to gather and collect fish and upgrade, depending on what you're trying to go for, in which case it just leaves it there face up. This guy can go three down. When he goes down here to the trench floor, he can simply choose to research, and when he does that, he'll take one of these. You can only ever have one of these and one of these, so when you collect this, it's best to start going back up here to return them and get the victory points and allowing yourself to go back down into the game in, and gathering more research tokens. And that's pretty much the game. Basically what happens is as this deck runs out, you're going to run across these oxygen tanks, and when the last one is revealed, the game is going to end. You're going to take everything that you've collected, whether it be in your submarine, or whether it be in your in front of you in your tableau and you're going to tally up the points you get two points for each of these guys here you're gonna get points for sets and uh runs and then you're also gonna get negative two points for each of these sprockets you get when hitting cephalopods in the expansion it gives you the ability to upgrade utilizing these research stations which can let you sit here for another turn and collect another one because in general you can only collect one but when you have these guys here you can collect more than one then they also give you the deep sea monsters like this kraken here what happens when you draw these guys and flip them over uh, is that you're going to do whatever it says and then you're going to get an extra turn. So this is going to affect you in some way, usually negatively, in which case it's going to go away for the most part, not always though, and then you're going to have to go ahead and flip over a new card and take an extra turn. Some of these guys will drag you to the bottom and hold you, other than others are going to do damage to you unless you're able to stun them, etc, etc. And that's the idea of the game. There's a ton of different creatures you're going to have to, have to deal with. There's a limited amount of research tokens you're going to have throughout the game as you collect them. And of course, trying to get the best upgrades possible and maximize your return turns when playing the game. Now obviously it's not possible and there's different things that you can do or can't do in the game when trying to maximize, but that is the game the Mariana Trench with of course the Deep Sea Expansion. We'll come up, I'll discuss some of the monsters, some of the creatures, and as well as maybe some good strategy and whether I think you should pick up the game on Kickstarter, link down below in the description. Researching the depths of the ocean is a complex and difficult thing to do while traversing the Mariana Trench. You're going to want to, of course, gather the information you can from the depths and bring it back up. That's the main idea of the game. Going down, gathering the thing, bringing it back up, move, flip over, move, research, or of course, if you're at the base and you want to end your turn because you want to gather a stun to prevent yourself from losing points, Pretty much all you can do. What comes into the uniqueness of this game is how you choose to gather upgrades, creatures that you discover, which ones you're going to take and which ones you're going to leave, and then the ability to decide on what upgrades will benefit you the most. There's a lot of mitigation in this game if you can find it. It's one of those really light games with quite a bit of complexity and replayability. And of course, adding in the monsters from the deep has a unique twist as well, where you're flipping over monsters you'll get to take an extra turn but you potentially would suffer yourself or certain things like for instance we'll talk about some of these like the dunculosaurus whenever you reveal this it bites off an upgrade if your submarine has no upgrade you pop a rivet 
However, you can shock it with one of those shock tokens and it will basically run away. It's this nasty monster. You don't want to get it. Uh, you also have the Plethiosaurus. When you revealed, it eats one deep sea creature on your sub. And if it contains no deep sea creature, you pop a rivet, meaning you take damage. You can shock it once again to make it go away. Or the Kraken, it drags the sub to the trench four and you don't collect research and no damages to the sub. When you get to the bottom, you're gonna have to go back up. So you can potentially lose your opportunity to gather research tokens, which are one of the main ways you're gonna score in the game, other than of course runs and pairs. Additionally too, yes, there's a quite a bit of luck in the game because you don't know what's gonna be down below. You don't know if you can actually take the upgrade or the fish, you might not want to, you might not be able to which plays into the role all the upgrades utilizing sonar to see the cards adjacent to you and what's going to benefit you in your points total at the end of the game in comparison to your opponent the game obviously will end up abruptly and probably not when you want it to which is kind of the point so that you're always constantly wanting to try again and increase your score increase your ability to go to do well during this game playing with the single player works well I like the idea of as you score you're gonna get more and more points when I first played it I thought I did actually pretty well, I did not. And I realized there are certain things I could have done much better. And I played it again. I played this game countless times on the solo mode because it's so quick and the ability to improve is impressive as you play the game. I played it two players as well. I had Callie and her friend play it two players going around gathering them. The theme in the game is very rich. It feels like you're moving down into the trench. You're finding deep sea monsters and creatures and all kinds of things dealing with the bad cephalopods that were going to hurt your ship. Or of course, if you're playing with the expansion, the monsters as well. Well, it's a very quick experience. It's a very light experience. This is definitely going to be a filler game. It's something that you're only going to play probably once or twice while waiting in between another game or waiting for people to show up. Or, of course, if you only have a certain amount of time. I really, really like the mat. I think that this is like something I would definitely pick up. If this is an interesting like game for you, the mat is going to be very nice as well because it's going to feel definitely more with the theme. I played it without the mat just to see how I felt about it. It's fine. But the mat actually provides a lot of beauty to the game. And of course, Tristan Rosin is an amazing artist. And I think that's what plays a lot of role in the theme in this game. It feels really nice to play this game. It's very simple. Anybody can pretty much play this game. It's, I guess, I don't know, six or seven six-year-olds can yeah something like that i don't have any kids so I, I don't know but I, I imagine it's really simple how to play this game it's just the complexity of making those points and gathering them to progress your score and get better as you play and of course the chance and variability does play a factor in it as well if you're interested in taking a look at the game definitely check out the link down below it's something i'm going to keep into my collection it's something i'm going to bring out as filler games or if it's just one or even two of us around maybe i'll pass it to a friend and let them try it out and i'll probably and want to put this up on the website as a good single player game that you can improve on that's really quick and really simple. Let me know what you guys think down below in the comments section. Tell me if this is something that you would pick up. Solo players, I'm actually really curious about your opinions on this game because I'm not generally a solo player and I feel like this works really well as a solo player experience, but is it something you would pick up? Why or why not? All right, thank you so much for watching. Let's, let's take the outro. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. If you like this video, check out the rest of our videos here on YouTube. Like, subscribe, and comment. We review a ton of games. We're doing some playthroughs as well, and unboxings, all kinds of stuff that you can take a look at, as well as our website with writers that are going to cover some games like this one, so you get a difference of opinion, which might help you decide, as well as, of course, other games that we here haven't even played. We do have two giveaways going on, one for Dungeon Drop and the other for Side Effects for the campaign's Mud and the campaign's Dungeon Drop drop too deep expansion if you want to go ahead and take a look at that on the site it's free to enter and you can win some amazing games both of them are a lot of fun we backed them here josh backed them as well and if you want to go ahead and pick them up as well before you go ahead and enter the giveaway go ahead that way you can if you win you'll have an extra copy to give away to a friend or a family member go ahead also like comment and of course subscribe hitting that subscribe button bell notification definitely helps us it's one of those things that's going to get out the reach for these games so you can see more games like this one more creators and independent thinkers going and making unique products that you can try out and play for yourself and they do a really good job i'm really impressed with a lot of the stuff i've been seeing lately all right guys thank you so much for watching and as always i look forward to exploring the deeps of the mariana trench with you next time i also really like the band mariana trench mariana's trench yeah it's kind of poppy it's a little more Callie's thing but i, I do i do enjoy it